G'day there, welcome to the closing bell on the uh, 1st of March for me. And today I'm going to have a chat about iron ore. Um, I think it's starting to look a little bit bearish. Um, I, you know, we know that uh, iron ore has been one commodity that has really held up beautifully. That's a very important commodity for Australia, of course. And, um, you know, we have really have seen a crash in so many things, future facing metals, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And iron ore has held up even in the face of Chinese property imploding. Um, and I think a lot of fund managers scratching their heads, wondering what the hell iron ore is doing up at 130, 140 bucks. And I heard uh, a few of them chatting uh, at the start of the year, wondering what it was doing up there. And uh, we're seeing a bit of weakening off of demand. Um, the Chinese um, steel producers, you know, their margins are really getting crunched often a bit of a forward indicator uh, for a, a softening in demand for iron ore. And, uh, you know, next year we've got Samandu coming online, the uh, Rio Tinto huge project in Guinea. Um, you know, it'll add 5% to supply, world supplies, uh, seaborne supply of iron ore, um, and possibly into a softening market. So uh, there's a few um, bumps in the road ahead. And one of the things about iron ore is when the music stops, uh, boy, it can be brutal. And uh, if we think about the forward curve for iron ore at the moment, it is definitely pointing down. Uh, so if iron ore here is about 118, you know, in about a year, let's say March next year, uh, the forward curve sort of looks like that and, you know, really does even keep going. Um, over the next year or two, expecting things will soften off. But the thing about iron ore is <laughs> when it when the music stops, uh, the move can be uh, brutal. So uh, what I'm saying is uh, that the expectations for these you know companies over the next few years, their earnings, we know we're sort of near the top of the cycle. Um, but you know expectations are, it's going to look something like this and uh, the future could look something like this and the share prices of um, a lot of those stocks could really come off the boil quite rapidly if we see a very sharp uh, turn down in iron ore you know, in the near future. So I just wanted to point out what I'm seeing um, just so you can keep your eye out um, for um, how it's looking. You know, you might have big positions yourself uh, in the space. Um, so just uh, simplifying things down, you know, looking at these uh, waves, how they develop uh, over time, you know, as we're getting to a new high in the move, you're then, you know, searching out the lowest uh, point after that. You've got a new high in the move there. Last point after that, new high in the moon there. And as these waves develop, you know, I'm, I'm expecting to see um, retracements uh, as it, it moves higher, usually into uh, either the midpoint of the wave. Sorry about that. And you know, I, I look at those sort of uh, levels. If I've seen a wave develop, if I think there is a trend developing, you know, I'm looking at the point of control of that as a gravitational point that it'll you know, more than likely retest uh, if it does turn down. And then the buy zone being the 75 to 87% retracement of that previous wave uh, is often a good spot to be looking for a reversal. And again, expecting a, a move at least back to the point of control and then if the trend is going to continue, um, often that can be a great entry point um, looking for reversals out of those sort of zones. Um, so that's really, uh, you know, how I uh, look at these things and, and uh, keep showing you um, when we're looking for different opportunities out there. And, you know, uh, as an example, if I was just to look at some of these waves in the past, Let's say this little one here. And you can see, again, there's your wave. Move back into that buy zone area. 
uh, rally wear into the sell zone uh, and then back to the point of control, back to the buy zone, back to the point of control, sell zone, point of control. So lots of work done. You know, everyone's confused and, and uh, the bulls and the bears all pretty sick of it by then. And then it's ready to, to take off for the next uh, wave higher. And um, uh, as you're sort of uh, following these things along, you know, you, you're thinking if the previous wave does uh, completely uh, get reversed. So if I'm looking at just the way this has developed over the last few years, you know, I'm looking at that last major wave higher, which happened in um, 2021, and sort of analysing what's happened since, uh, you'll see that uh, the failure and crash, this big spike, final run, and then the, the failure, and where did it move back to? You can see again, back to that uh, buy zone area. We got the rally out of there, buy pivot, the move back to the point of control, there's a midpoint. So, and, and it actually got lots of resistance there, collapsed again. There's your sell pivot, there's your failure. And it actually took out the low of the previous wave. If I'm just, you know, looking at this structure developing, I don't really want that previous low of the wave to be taken out because that's often a bit of a hint that the trend may be actually changing. So even though I'd only just tapped it, it did tell you that the, uh, you know, the weakness in the trend was quite strong and that uh, you're now looking at this saying, well, there's a chance that this is actually the beginning of a downtrend. And that's the point I wanted to make in what we're going to analyze um, right now, looking at uh, the way uh, this thing has moved just recently. We're just looking at that, those down waves. And again, in reverse, we're looking at the same thing where we're saying on these waves, uh, you know, where will the resistance be? And, you know, I'm saying it's either the point of control, the midpoint, which is what it was there, or up in the sell zone of the wave, you're saying, yeah, watch out up there. That's where you can get a lot of resistance. And then we've got another major wave to the downside there. So if I'm looking at this whole structure and I'm saying this could be the beginning of a long-term downtrend in iron ore, I'm then uh, very interested in looking at um, this most recent wave that second wave down and saying, right, well, what are we seeing uh, there? And where all we're doing is thinking about this most recent wave down um, over the last few years in iron ore. We're saying, how is it behaving? And we know that we expect if prices are going to be weak, if that long-term downtrend is going to take shape, that we expect there to be quite a lot of resistance in that sell zone of the wave. And uh, just there's too many things going on in there. So we've got that down wave there. We're looking now at that wave and saying, right, if it's going down, we expect resistance up in that sell zone being the 75 to 87% retracement of that wave. And what's most interesting to me is the way it has done it, which is to have uh, moved in this fashion here. And that is a pretty classic, uh, what's known as an ABC formation. So here, A, B, C, and how that works is uh, you have had a rally and failure, and then you've taken out that high. If prices then turn back down and fail, can't hold on above A, 
and you get a cell signal, you're then saying there's um, a chance of a continuation of the trend. So we're saying that there is a downtrend in place. We have this major wave down. We then get a corrective move in an A, B, C formation, which is heading up into the cell zone of the wave where we expect to see selling pressure. It then fails, turns down. So we're getting sort of a double whammy, I guess, of saying uh, that we've had this major wave. It has corrected an ABC to where we think resistance is, turns down, gives us a sell signal, uh, and it just, uh, there we get that monthly sell pivot from last month. And it's saying, well, now the conditions are right that uh, if the selling continues and we see a continuation down through here, you may very well see um, a collapse similar to this sort of a wave here. Up into the cell zone and then bang, um, heading back to test those lows again. So it's taken a long time to set up. You know, this is um, years in the making uh, for iron ore. We have China coming out early this month. Uh, I think people hoping that uh, we're going to see stimulus and help in the property market, which will reignite um, demand for iron ore. So I guess if that happens and the market doesn't like what it sees, um, conditions are now right uh, for iron ore to actually surprise to the downside. And, you know, it can still rally. Um, the way I'd be looking at it is, you know, sure, if iron ore heads back above 150, I'm, uh, I'd fall on my sword, and especially back above that wave, you know, 165, um, I'm wrong, and uh, iron ore is strong as an ox, all good. Uh, but as long as it sort of stays below 150, I'd expect any rally to meet pretty stiff resistance, and I'm worried what happens uh, under 110, let's say, which would be you know, back under uh, that 20 month moving average. And you know, you'd probably be seeing the long term trend again turning down. And there's just a chance now that we've already seen this take shape uh, that we're going to see uh, something like that. And uh, that is really how I'm seeing it right now. I'm, I'm working on opportunities in that space for my members. And um, just a little warning for you there to keep an eye on things in that space if you've got a large exposure. And remember that if we do see a real collapse in iron ore, we're going to see the likes of BHP and Rio coming off the boil. And they're a pretty big and important uh, part of um, the index, uh, ASX200, aren't they? Um, so that's really how I'm seeing it at the moment. I think the uh, setup is pretty ripe that uh, any rally now in iron ore will probably get hit. And if China disappoints early in the month, um, that could be the catalyst to get the ball rolling um, to the downside. All right. Well, I think that's um, pretty short and sweet. And that's all I could really find out there that was of interest. And I'll come back with more next week. Cheers.